Hello. Well, um, here we are again. We are continuing our little mini series where we're listening in to some conversations that Jesus had with different peoples. Um, I'm, I'm asking the question, what, what did Jesus say um, about various things? And you remember, uh, in our last session, we looked at um, Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. And in particular, what Jesus had to say about life, where life came from and what life was about. And in particular, that that life was a life with God, that that life was one that was possible, that um, it was one that was provided for by Jesus. And he showed us that the pathway, the, the way to obtain that life was through faith, through trusting in Jesus. This week, we, we're looking at a slightly different uh, conversation. Uh, this, this was a little bit more um, confrontational. Um, I think it must have been quite interesting at the time to have uh, been listening in to this as an expert in the laws, one of the leading theologians of the day, comes along and asks a question. And he's asking a question to test out Jesus, whether he's, um, whether he's going to come back with something that's, that's orthodox, that's safe, or whether it's gonna, he's going to say something that they can use against him. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 22, and I'll just want to pick up from verse 14. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test Jesus. Teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said to him, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and prophets depend on these two commands. I really can imagine that the people were sitting around and as the um, expert in the law steps forward to ask a question of Jesus. I could, can almost imagine people just leaning in a little bit, sitting on the edge of their seats. Uh, what's Jesus going to say? Is he going to be able to answer this, this probing question? And, and it's, I think it's a really fascinating uh, little exchange that happens here. And, and the, the guy says, this guy, this expert says to Jesus, what's the most important thing? in life. What's the most important thing? And um, in many ways, the, the answer that Jesus gave were, was, was pretty safe. It was pretty um, straight down the line. But as with everything with Jesus, um, he has a way of taking what we know and just twisting it very slightly so that it becomes something revolutionary and different. And, and I can see this happening in this little conversation. Jesus says that this life with God that we're all after, which we started talking about in our last session, this life with God is going to be stamped and marked out by one thing, love. And in particular, he starts off by talking about love for God. And I, I kind of want to do a little bit of a, uh, a circle and, and just kind of go to the end and then come back to the beginning. Because Jesus is saying here that this, this, this life, this life with God, um, is, is all about a love for God, a commitment and a love for God, a, a, a passion for God. But it's, it will spill over into a love for other people, for our neighbours, for those around us. And, and it reminds me again that um, writings that John said, how, how can you know that you love God if you can't love the person in front of you? Um, how can you love a God who you can't see if you can't love a person you can see? And this whole question of love is, is a really interesting and, and challenging one. And the way that Jesus lays it out, which I'm going to just come on to in a second, is so big, so profound, that there's a part of me that says, we, we can't live that. We can't do that. And I kind of want to also just point to the fact, I'm going to come back to this towards the end, we're not asked to do this on our own. 
I kind of want to get that out there first because once I start getting into this, I can see people going, oh my goodness, this, this is impossible. You're asking too much of us. Um, I'm not asking it of you. This is what God wants to do in us. This is the life that God wants to breathe into us. This is the existence, the way of living that God is saying, if you invite me into your life, this is what life could look like. So, he starts off by talking about that the, this, um, this love um, that Jesus wants to talk about. The most important thing we can do in life is love God. And he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. And here, I, I kind of need to put out first thing I need to just lay out which Jesus is saying is loving God I love for God has to be a priority in our lives Jesus is pointing back to one of the most foundational texts of the Old Testament that we love God with all that we are with all our heart soul and mind we must make love for God the number one priority for a believer it should be the most significant thing in our life. The most important thing we can do is love God. That's more important than anything else. It's, it's more important than, than caring for people. It's more important, in fact, Jesus is saying that before you even start thinking about loving your neighbor, love God. Make God number one. The greatest, the most important thing that we can do in life um, is love God first. And I think as believers, I, I want to just throw in a caution here, as believers, we need to be really careful that we don't just go, oh yeah, I totally agree, um, and then move on and not think through what Jesus is saying. Do I really know what it means to love God first in my life? Above everything else? Above family? above work, above sport or entertainment? What about above myself? You see, this call to love God first and foremost in our lives is very deep, very profound. And, and I'd like us to just move on a little bit and explore this a bit further. Because as well as, as love God as a priority, I think Jesus is saying love God with a passion. Because he says, this love is to be with our heart and our soul and our mind. It's, it's to encompass the whole of our being. This is not just a, an intellectual assent to who God is. This is not just a, uh, oh, I'm going to go to church because I, I, love, I love being in a big hall with all those people and the warm, fuzzy feelings I get. It's, it's not about that. It, it's more, this loving God is to be something that, becomes a passion in our lives that is bigger than any other passion in our lives. Our whole being, our whole existence is meant to be dominated by this one passion for God, to love God with all that we are. And this love for God affects our heart, so it changes what we like, it changes what we enjoy, it changes how we feel about things. This love for God is to, is to be with our soul, which is our, our innermost being, so our values, our attitudes, our choices. This love is to be with our mind, it's to be about how we think and about what we think about. This love is to be a, a whole, all-consuming thing. So it's, it's not just a priority, it's not just a passion, but it's all-consuming. And, and I love the, the little word all that creeps in here. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the word that is being used there for all literally means the whole of. The entirety of. An all-consuming focus on God. No half measures. We're all in. Every part of me, so it's all of me, for all of time, in all situations, 
God first. A passion that's all consuming. Now, um, quick wind back to where I started from. It's very easy to think about this, listen to this, and hold your head in your hands and go, I, I'm, I'm just not there. I just don't know how even to get there. Well, I want to remind us that I don't think Jesus is laying this out as something that we must strive to achieve. I think Jesus is pointing us to the life that he offers us, that he will work in us as we live with him and for him. And this life, Jesus then follows on. Again, I, I, I find it fascinating. You know, they, they asked Jesus, the, the expert in the law, the law asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus replies, and the second one is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus adds something to what he was asked for. And this is where I see Jesus putting an extra little spin on things. And, and, and there's, a, there's an awful lot of focus and can be an awful lot of focus on how important it is for us as believers to love each other and to love those around us. And that's rightly so. Jesus adds it on here, not because he's saying that um, this is somehow, again, down to us or, or down to us to, to work or strive for or to try and conjure up in, in our own strength. But immediately what strikes me here is, is Jesus is saying, if you are totally committed to loving and seeking God, you will end up loving people. It's not, it's not one or the other. But actually, if you, if you end up trying to love people, you, you might find that pretty hard going. Um, and, and it won't help you in your focus on God. But actually, if you put your focus on God and on loving God, you will find that you will end up loving people. Again, back to what John repeated a bit later in the, in the New Testament, in his letter. How can you love God who you... Say you love God who you can't see if you don't love the person next to you who you can see. In other words, when we, when we love God, when, when, the love of, when, we, when we give ourselves to God and this love for God grows in us, it spills out into the whole of our life. We become just more loving, full stop, to everyone we meet. Because a love for God does something in us and changes us. And I want to end with a how. Because it's very easy to, to hear things like this and go, oh, I'm just not there, that's just not me, I don't know how to do that. And to be honest, if you knew some of the people in my life, you would understand why it's hard to love them. And, and the how to me is really important. How do I get this love of God? How do I get this love of people? How does, this, how does it happen within me? And I, I, I read a little paragraph in one of the, the commentaries I was reading on this passage. And I, I want to just read this little bit to you because it sums up perfectly where I think we need to land on this. And, and these are the words that were written. This is not just a better version of the world's love that we can manufacture for ourselves. Nor is it even something God manufactures for us. God is love and when we receive the Holy Spirit into our hearts we find that God himself dwells inside us we find ourselves filled with the love of Christ so that we naturally love as the world cannot love this is the great factor which makes the church so refreshingly different God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit and what that passage from Romans 5, that, where it, that, that quote ended, that passage reminds me that, that where I started from. That God does not expect us to achieve this out of our own strength. In the last session I was saying about how we need to come to God in faith, believe in faith, to take as true what Jesus says. Who he says he is, what he says about life what he says about what God is going to do in us and through us. 
And, and one of the things that is very clearly told to us is that when we give ourselves to God, when we surrender our life to God, when we say, okay, yeah, Jesus, you can be my Lord, you can be my God, God responds and does something in us. He pours his spirit into us. And as he pours his spirit into us, God himself starts to move into our life. And God is of his very nature loving. So inevitably there is a love that starts to explode within us. A love for God, an interest in God, a wanting to know more about Jesus, a, a yearning to know more about God and life and Jesus. And that love, that, that spills out and starts to change how I look at people around me, how I interact with others. And I kind of want to say, if you, if you hunger for that type of life, where you've got a passion for God and a concern for people, if you hunger for that type of life, you find it through surrender to Jesus, not by striving for it yourself. So I want to conclude with two questions. If, you're, if your hunger for that type of life, if you want to live that type of life, you need to surrender your life to Jesus, full stop. There's no other way to get this life. This life that Jesus talks about over and over and over again, it comes as we surrender to Christ, as we accept Christ as our Lord, as our Saviour, as we say, yes, you are God, there is no other but you. And as we do that and we surrender, we say, no, I'm going to... I'm going to give my life to God, then actually he does something in us. And you will find that this life starts to grow and grow and grow within you. If you've made that decision many years ago and you're feeling a bit weary and a bit worn out, and maybe you feel you're, you're not, quite, not quite as passionate for God as you used to be or you're losing your love for the people around you. My answer um, or my challenge is simply this. Do you need to recommit your life to Christ? Do you need to go back and say, okay, God, I choose again to be all in. I, I choose to hold nothing back. I just give my all to God again, completely and utterly. Because it's only in that place of surrender to God that he pours his spirit into us where we are enabled to love him and to love others. And so but I really want to just seriously challenge us. If we want to see this world changed, if we want to see this world a better place, then we have to become the people who God has called us to be. Loving, compassionate, caring, generous people. That is only going to happen if we are all in for God if we make him our priority, if we make him our passion, and if we let him consume all of us in every ounce of our being. So the challenge for myself and the challenge I extend to you is, are you in? It's simple, yes or no? Let's pray. Father God, may we choose from this moment, of this day, to be completely all in for you. Will you pour your spirit upon us that we may love you first and foremost, above all things else, above anyone else. May we love you with a passion that is all-consuming. And may that love for you spill out into love for others. As we surrender to you, will you do this work in us, we pray. In Jesus' name.